What's going on, everyone? Good Mike Or Commentaries back at you with an exclusive mic drop. Normally, I reserve this segment for previous clips from past episodes, but every now and then, I'll hit you with an exclusive one. And we had some pretty controversial news coming out of the NWA Power episode on Tuesday night that is, tur- that is currently playing out as we speak. And for those of you who are on social media, I'm sure you are aware of this. Uh, For those of you who caught the show, you're probably aware of it too. But if you're not, uh, this week on NWA Power on YouTube during the Trevor Murdoch and Nick Aldis match, our friend Jim Cornette, who has had a pretty busy week, um, had a specific line in commentary that is, you know, shall we say questionable. He is attempting, I suppose, to illustrate the toughness of Trevor Murdoch and says the line, Trevor Murdoch is so tough that he could strap a bucket of fried chicken to his back and ride across Ethiopia on a moped and nothing would happen to him. Which, when you hear that, you almost do a double take. You're like, excuse me, what (laughs) did he just say? Oh my God, where do you even begin with this, guys? This was controversial right off the bat. A lot of people noticed it on Twitter right away and are saying that is their final episode of NWA Power. What the fuck? How can Cornette say that? And better yet, how can NWA air that? Because these are taped episodes. How that line of commentary wasn't cut out in post, I have no idea. So it's on the NWA, too, for you know whoever's doing the editing there, maybe Cornette is, uh, to listen to that and think that, that, doesn't, that that's going to be okay to make air. Not cool at all. So it's negligence on both parts. Now, let me say something right up front because I'm going to have a lot of opinions here on Jim Cornette because he's been very busy this week, but also very just busy lately. He makes a lot of noise. He is one of the big parts of the wrestling division going on right now. You know, not only do we have to deal with it with the WWE, and AEW, you know, but now there's the division between, you know, comedy wrestling versus people that hate comedy wrestling and what qualifies as wrestling and what doesn't. And everybody's, you know, it's the stupid war. I've been coining it uh, the stupid war for quite some time. And as a matter of fact, on the October 19th and October 26th episodes of the Winged Eagle podcast, I mentioned this possibility with NWA and Jim Cornette, because one of the things that I thought was so lovely about the NWA and still do is that this little Um, studio wrestling show that's on YouTube is such a nice corner of the wrestling world to go to to get away from all the nonsense, to get away from all the hate, to get away from all the negativity. You know, it's very pure and innocent, and it's just a nice, easy, hour-long show to watch that has a nostalgic, you know, type of backdrop and aesthetic, and I just love that as a kid who grew up watching this type of shit. So I loved the NWA and the idea of this, and I'm firmly behind it and support it 100%. But one of the things I did say in those two podcast episodes is that my only concern is that their lead commentator, you know, and the voice really of the NWA, Jim Cornette, is an extremely negative figure online. You know, he doesn't just he doesn't just um, express his opinions. He aggressively and angrily expresses his opinions in an extreme vulgar nature. And anybody that has even the slightest disagreement with him is blocked in his world. Just the day or two ago, he blocked a friend of the channels, Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret, and they worked together. Cornette's been in at least one of Brian's videos, maybe more. And just the fact that Brian had this opinion of, you know, comedy wrestling isn't that bad. It's not ruining the business the way people think it is or whatever, because there's that big division. That was enough to get him blocked. Now, Cornette, I don't even know who he, I don't think he knows who I am. I'm going to do my best to not get blocked here, but he'll probably block me anyway at some point. Um, but before what I'm going to get into about Jim Cornette that I dislike, let me kind of say something up front here that might even be in the minority. Because when I'm looking at Twitter and when I'm looking at social media right now, I'm seeing the word racist tossed around everywhere. Jim Cornette is a bigot. Jim Cornette is a racist. And I know it's going to surprise you. For me to sit here and listen to a line like he could drive across Ethiopia with a bucket of fried chicken and nothing would happen and not consider that racist, I'm going to kind of not, only because of who I know Jim Cornette to be previously. You know, this is not kind of like the Hogan thing where he's being blatantly racist. I think this is more like the Jordan Miles t-shirt thing, where it's like accidental racism, where you didn't fucking think what you were saying. You didn't examine it. And N.W.A., listened to that line when they were editing the show and thought it was fine. This was a, the ball was dropped by a lot of people here. Very uncool. But at least if Jim would have 
changed up his food choice and just said if he rode with a basket of sandwiches across Ethiopia, that would have limited it to just kind of a tasteless joke, not cool to poke fun at uh, people who are literally suffering every day. So no matter what, that wasn't a cool line. But at least if he would have said pizza, sandwiches, potato chips, egg rolls, I don't know, anything but fried fucking chicken, Jim Cornette. So I think this is more an issue of him being stupid and him just blurting out shit. Now, he keeps it relatively reserved for his NWA commentary. He's not over the top like he is on Twitter and like he is on his podcast. You know, he's not letting the expletives fly like he does on his podcast where every other word is fuck and shit and whatever. So he's just a really harsh individual to begin with. But I'm going to defend him here on the racist stuff. I don't believe he is. You know, I just I've just never really gotten that vibe from him before. He's been involved in racist angles and stuff before on TV when he was a heel manager. But I even though he lived in Tennessee and he's he's around that southeast where there is a lot of racial division, he's a Democrat. He fucking hates Donald Trump. That doesn't mean you can't be a racist, too. I'm just saying that the way I've known Jim to be is not to be a racist. So I'm really trying to say this and, and trying to judge this as honestly as I can. I just don't think it was a racist comment. I think it was a stupid comment. That is racist. I just don't think it was like intended to be racist. You know what I mean? Now, if Jim Cornette was a guy that had a history of this, or if this was Hulk Hogan or some shit saying this, I would have been like, all right, that's it. That's enough is enough. It's one too many things out of this fucking guy's mouth. Um, and, and I'm done. Um, but when the, with the racist stuff, that's not really in Jim Cornette's wheelhouse, in my opinion. You know, but he's been saying some other fucked up shit, too. He's been telling women wrestlers to get back in the kitchen. I could not believe I saw him tweet that. I was more, that didn't even make me mad. That just disappointed me. These are not the type of comments I'm accustomed to hearing him say. I'm always accustomed to him being upset and angry. And sometimes, years ago, when shoot interviews first started coming out, that was very entertaining. But it's really lost its luster over the years. It gets extremely old to hear this angry old man screaming at everybody every week about what he doesn't like. Jim Cornette saying that was ridiculous, and I cannot believe NWA let that air now. They actually pulled the episode. Right after people started making a stink, they pulled the episode. Dave Lagana issued a statement on Twitter saying, we apologize for uh, the offensive uh, comment that Jim Cornette made. We are pulling the episode down. We're going to edit it and cut that out, and it'll be back up in a little while. And I just checked YouTube, and NWA Power is back up there, and I'm assuming that Jim Cornette's line is now edited out. So um, I think Jim Cornette was stupid for saying it. I think NWA was even dumber for letting it air. But at the same time, I'm just going to pull back a little little bit on the racist stuff. I'm not going to go Category 5 outrage on this and Photoshop a KKK hood over Jim Cornette's head. I'm not going to go that far. But what I will say about Jim Cornette is that he has been incredibly out of line lately. And it's not healthy for him to be this way in a wrestling community that is full of so many dipshits. You know, that's why we're right in the middle of this stupid war. Two stupid groups of people arguing with each other and fighting with each other about everything. And Jim is fueling into this. And the latest one is this debate about comedy wrestling. And it seems to be lumped in with a lot of people like Joey Ryan, um, Orange Cassidy and Marco Stunt. And even somebody like Joey Janela, who's not too much comedy. He's not like Joey Ryan dick flip comedy, but people feel like he's another guy that doesn't deserve a spot or whatever. Where I land in this argument is that I don't give a shit. Number one, I don't think people should care this much about stuff. This is what the internet does. These type of opinions, when people start aggressively expressing them online, they're not even their own opinions. They're others' opinions that they heard on the internet, and now they're repeating. And you see that with the Jim Cornette defenders out there. They're like, you know, they're just mad because he speaks the truth. That is the most infuriating line about anyone to me. I even hate it when people tell me that as a compliment. I don't even like it when people tag me in tweets, say, you should listen to good mic work. He tells it like it is. He speaks the truth. I really cannot stand people, YouTubers, podcasters, people on social media who have to go out of their way to say that, who have to stand up and scream in all capital letters, I speak the truth. All that tells me is that you're an insecure piece of shit. And there's a certain guy that's like a leader of one of the big countries, the, the, the country that I live in. I forget his name, big fucking orange guy. He's kind of like that, where he's so fucking insecure, everything he says has to be self-praise first. And Jim Cornette is to the point where even if even people he respects, if they don't like his opinion, he's out of their life and blocked. This guy needs to have his head checked. 
all of the wrestling is filled with a lot of people that he loves and respects and love him back. You know, for him to go so far out of his way to claim that that company is never going to amount to shit, you know, and to do everything he can to harm them when his friends are there trying to make a living, man. You know, if you hate it so much, then just don't watch it, I suppose. But he's outwardly going out declaring how much he despises that type of wrestling and the Young Bucks and all sorts of... He feuds with a hundred different wrestlers. You know, Santino Morello a couple of year ago, years ago almost kicked his ass at a convention. You know, he literally has burned his bridge with everybody, and it used to be entertaining when he hated Vince Russo, or he had funny things to say filled with, uh, you know, the seven dirty words. It was all fun and games, right? But now it's been like 20 years. Get the fuck over it, Jim. And the fans like to mask this. The fans like to hide behind the, um, the, the respect for the sport. You know, this is garbage wrestling. This dumb shit that I was arguing with yesterday on Twitter kept referring to garbage wrestling and said, you know, that I'm just mad that he has a different opinion on garbage wrestling. I'm like, no, I don't give a shit what your opinion on anything is. You're trying to define garbage wrestling where I define any wrestling as wrestling. I don't give a shit if Orange Cassidy has his pans in his pockets. It's wrestling. Wrestling is fun. Wrestling is crazy. And we can go back and cite examples from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s of ridiculous fucking shit happening that is way worse than a dick flip and way worse than hands in your pockets. It amazes me that fans can't see that and they really think that this is harming it when, you know, this is the type of shit you see on independent wrestling. You know, I know Joey Ryan is technically working for Impact, but they suck. You know, this dick flip stuff and all this crazy stuff going on. This is like wrestling in in the back of bars and at nightclubs and stuff like that. This shit is harmless. If Joey Ryan is dick flipping Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania and winning the WWE title, then we have a problem. You're not seeing this from the big stars. Everybody hates on Janela and Cassidy and Marco Stunt. They're not winning any titles. They're small parts of the show that are there for entertainment purposes. If they're in the ring with Jericho, squashing him in five seconds for the AEW title, and and Orange Cassidy does that whole thing with his hands in his pockets, then I will be with you. But this whole debate over this comedy wrestling is just another way to divide the fans. And you've got fans who are generally insecure as it is, listening to a bunch of insecure YouTubers and podcasters that fuel that insecurity, and then you just have them aggressively stating their opinions and what they think and no other way nothing is going to change their mind when all it takes is a little bit of fucking thinking so jim Cornette is really attached to the past he was he was being accused of being attached to the past in the 90s remember you know part of the reason i think he was kind of ousted as on the creative team is just because wrestling had to go in a different direction to compete with wcw He's trying to resurrect the NWA and the Midnight Express and have an NWA division inside of the WWE. That's not going to compete with the NWO. Get the fuck out of here. You know, so wrestling has to evolve. Everything evolves. Humans, plants, animals, and technology. Look at your phone right now. Most of you are probably watching this or listening to me on your phone. Think of where that technology was 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I didn't get my first cell phone until I was in my mid-20s. I lived a whole lifetime before we all had a 4k camera in our pockets and i am really happy that we've evolved to be where we are so if sports and every single thing in this universe evolves why is wrestling exempt from this why is wrestling not allowed to evolve and why is wrestling not allowed to grow and expand to cover a lot of different shapes and sizes and types of people because you have wrestling and yeah i understand you know the old timers trust me you have a lot of people wrestling now that you wouldn't expect and would have never made it in the 80s and that's a lot of people's arguments they say man could you imagine someone like sammy guevara in a, in the wwe in the 1980s and i'm like mm, no <laughs> i couldn't I don't that's kind of irrelevant. No, I couldn't imagine him there because it was the 19 fucking 80s and now it's 2019 and those are two completely different times and eras and things are different than they were yesterday. And you guys know me, those of you who listen to my podcast, you know how nostalgic I am. I love doing old retro pay-per-view reviews and talking about the old days. I live for the old days. But I don't cling to it to the point where I'm demanding that everything should still be that way. I understand that shit's different, and I understand that wrestling is fucking half dead. And I think Monday Night Raw is the worst goddamn show on television, and it has nothing to do with dick flips. And has everything to do with just the WWE's monopoly and the overexposure and watering down of the product. And so many years have gone by now that, you know, you can't come up with creative and innovative ideas anymore because they've all been done to death. They've been done twice, three times, a dozen times times everything has 
even to the point where this uh, past Monday on Raw, we're right in the middle of this love triangle angle with Lana and Lashley and Rusev, and there was a pregnancy involved. This is all shit that's been done before. And it gets to the point where it's just not fulfilling to watch. It doesn't leave you wanting more. You don't shut off Monday Night Raw counting the days until next week. It's not like that. And it has nothing to do with Joey Ryan flipping people around with his dick. And plus, the majority of the talent out there, all this complaining comes from the fans. You don't have a whole lot of wrestlers, you know, current wrestlers out there that fucking hate Joey Ryan. Maybe there's one or two, but for the most part, this guy gets along with everybody. And there's been wrestlers in the ring, just like Cornette, somebody that's been in the business forever that hates this kind of thing. There's also people that's been in the wrestling business as long as Cornette that have no issue with this type of thing. So why are you so convinced that Cornette's right when there are other old timers that have no issue with it? You know, Jim Cornette, it's not even about him having these opinions. I wouldn't even mind if he had these opinions, but it's how he goes about it. It's how he's so harsh on Twitter and all these idiot wrestling fans feed off that kind type of negativity because that's all you see out there is negative. And then they get screaming and all of these opinions that they express are just stolen from other people. They hear it. They like it. They repeat it without analyzing it. Garbage wrestling, comedy wrestling, or any other kind of wacky type of wrestling isn't hurting the wrestling business. You want to know what's hurting the wrestling business? All of this shit. The stupid-ass division between the AEW fans and the WWE fans. The stupid division between the fans that think comedy wrestling is the worst thing in the world. And the fans like me who do not give a fuck at all. To place any of the blame on wrestling's downfall on one thing specifically is fucking ignorant and stupid and foolish and short-sighted and obtuse. Any other word or synonym for fucking stupid that you can think of, that's what it is. And all of this bums me out because I love Jim Cornette and I wish he wouldn't be like this. I wouldn't I wish he wouldn't contribute to the bad in wrestling. I wish he would contribute to the good, which is what he is doing or has been doing in NWA power. But then on the side on social media and on his podcast, he's an absolute raving lunatic. So I don't know what the future holds now for the NWA. It's only been a couple of hours since this happened. If the backlash continues, they may have to cut Jim Cornette loose. You know, and that's partially, like I said, that's partially on them, too, because this was a taped episode and they had the ability to edit this out and they didn't. So maybe Jim Cornette's job is safe because they're going to place the blame on themselves for not editing that out when they had the opportunity to. I don't know. But if the backlash continues and like I said, if Cornette, if Cornette wasn't so visible, you know, in the community with all of his anger and his opinions. And he was just, you know, a regular guy that didn't make any waves. And he said this stupid thing. I think he could probably recover from it. But given the aggressive and angry nature of Jim Cornette and everything we've heard him say for the past few weeks, months and years, you know, he's probably the worst possible guy to say something like this on a show like NWA that's so wholesome and that everybody is praised and is loved up until this point. So it'll be interesting to see if NWA can survive this because I've still got their backs. I still like the product. And I think everybody here involved, Jim Cornette and the entire uh, team at the NWA made a huge mistake here. And I'm a pretty forgiving guy. I don't like this cancel culture where, you know, one thing happens and you're just done with them. You know, we see that way too much. So I try my best to at least examine these situations situations and treat them individually and try to be as fair as possible. And even though I disagree with so much of what Jim Cornette says, especially recently, I'm not labeling him as a racist here. So just want to put that out there. Let me know what you guys think of this situation in the comments below. Always fun to talk about shit like this. Uh, as far as what I've got coming up later on this week on the channel, I'll be back up here on Friday uh, to predict war games and Survivor Series. So I will catch you in just a few days. Y'all be good. Peace.